So how does your mind process trauma? Great question, right? Well, Christabel Stansberry used drugs to escape hers, and now four and a half years sober, she is sharing her story with hopes of helping others. Before she joins us live, let's take a look at her story. A warning, some viewers may find this story disturbing. It took me a long time to even understand my own story because of how the brain just processes trauma. Emotional and physical abuse. Those are the things Christabel tries to bury as a child. I would say I was about 11 or 12 years old when I started using substances. I started with alcohol and then I went quickly to other substances. Now, there was a local drug dealer that sold to kids at school. You know, the fact I was a little girl, I had a lot of interest in me. So I had a lot of access to substances. The real first time I drank, I remember I felt I was so beautiful. I felt like I was part of a group. I felt like I belonged. And I remember that night specifically, I want to do this for the rest of my life. Before long, meth becomes Christopher's choice. There was time abandoned house and I hadn't eaten in such a long time that I couldn't physically walk. I had been living a life that at any point a rat, like somebody should have looked at their life and said, hey, I want to stop. This is too much. But for me, I had been living that life for such a long time that my real ending was when I needed to love and care about myself. So I went to the doctor. I found out I was pregnant. For the first time in her life, Christabel wants to stop using. My rock bottom was due to the fact that I finally had to start taking care of something else. It was, so in a cheesy way, it was really love. Wow. Please welcome to the show, Christabel Stansberry. Thank you Welcome. for being here. Yes. I I can only imagine how many of our viewers and just I can only speak to me personally can relate to your story. Thank you for being so transparent and courageous today. So as a teen, let's back up. Mm -hmm. You ran away from home a couple of times, right? Where did you go and did anyone ever come for you looking for you? Yeah, so I and thank you for having me and Absolutely. giving me an opportunity to even talk about my story. So I did. I ha when I started running away, initially it was, you know, other folks around my age and then it started going to progressively older, mostly men. Um, so I did have places to stay at that point. Um, people did, my family, other people who, you know, I was in the foster system, so the state had an interest in me, they did call the police. And eventually they stopped calling the police and because I kept leaving. Well, this also puts you in a vulnerable position, although you feel like you have autonomy over your life because you at one point met a detox counselor who was supposed to help you, but something else happened. So how did meeting this person change your life? So I, at this time I was uh, picked up by the police and they took me to detox because that's what they could do with me. And I, at that detox, I met this person who was uh, much older than me. And that was a person who actually, uh, you know, our relationship became intimate. It became more of a personal relationship. And um, he's actually the one who got me hooked on meth. Oh. Can you also tell us, you said older, how old were you and how old was he? I always like to talk about timelines with trauma because it, like when I was using drugs, the trauma that I was going through, it's difficult to go through that. But I was probably around 13 years old. Um, I, I believe he was 25. Oh my mm. gosh. Yeah. How did that relationship end? We, the relationship ended when I was 17 years old and I, I wanted to get sober. I really wanted to get clean. And so I ended up, um, one night just praying and asking for help and I ended up and I want to apologize said relationship and I do understand that you were preyed upon by a yeah. child predator oh you're okay thank you well uh, you know as somebody that's uh, two and a half two years and four months into uh, you know, I stopped drinking mm -hmm. uh, you know I really wanted to first of all applaud you for what thank you've you. done and that idea of just like you made that decision that you were ready to stop so take us now we're years in the future what addicted to and what made you want to stop like what was that moment was it just your daughter was it just your life did you want a different life like talk to somebody that is maybe you 20 years ago 
Yeah, um, and you know, when I think about how what I would want to talk to myself, I would want to say like, you are loved, you are valuable. I did not have a lot of self-love or self-worth or value. Um, and what that when I found out I was pregnant, I started attending 12 steps. I, you know, I had an equivalent of a sixth grade education. So I started going to like adult high school and just like, you know, going through the basic education. Um, getting your life back. Getting I my love life that. back. I yeah. I absolutely love that. Yeah. And so I ended up um, getting my bachelor's and, you know, my background is micromolecular biology wow. and I love physics. I love science. And so I was able to tap into this person that I didn't know existed. But with that, I put away the drugs, and, but I never dealt with all that underlying trauma. And I ended up drinking again for five years. And so that was the change in my life was I did put away drugs, but I, can, I used alcohol abusively because I hadn't handled that level of trauma. Mm -hmm, right? when, you, wow. when you talk about trauma, how does shame factor in when it comes to addiction? Ooh, toxic shame. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It, so going back to, you know, you said, I apologize for saying this was a relationship when that was a predator. Like I took that on, like that was my fault. I mm. should have been better. I should have been smarter. And that went through so many different areas of my life where I didn't look at the other person as they shouldn't have been doing this. I looked at it as I should have differently when it comes to I had this belief that if I was just had more willpower, if I just, you know, if I was just better, I could have conquered that. And why I talk about, you know, the achievements I've done in my life as a sober individual, mm. I don't have a lack of willpower. Like <laughs> I, I can work extremely hard. I'm intelligent. I'm all those things. But because I didn't understand the, you know, addiction and trauma as how my brain is just formed maybe a little bit differently than somebody that can have a couple beers and walk away or, you know, because I didn't understand that, I took that on as this is a character flaw. That's just a part of me. Right. And I'm, sh listen, a lot of our viewers feel that shame mm -hmm. and that's because of the stigma attached, attached to addiction. Talk to us about your treatment center and also mm -hmm. you said something that I really felt the fact that it's almost like you need a dual diagnosis, right? A dual mm -hmm. treatment center. You need to mm -hmm. not only treat the substance abuse, but you need to treat what is leading up to that, whether it's PTSD, any of those things. Yeah. So uh, I love that you brought that up because once you take away the substances, there's stuff underneath. And if that stuff's not addressed, then, you know, when I'm that anxiety just comes crashing or, you know, that depression comes a lot of times, you know, folks will turn back to what works. And so dealing with those underlying issues and it's, it's a slow process. Like I get people who are like, okay, I just want to come in and be cured in 30 days, you know, but we're talking about the human brain. We're talking about years of history. Right. So it's not a 30 day cure and it is hard work. So I wanted to do chrysalis because yeah. I wanted to put a place that was very safe and also offered, um, long-term care. We have a hard out. I want to give her website really important. CCC treatment.com. Christabel, thank, thank you so much. So much. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.